Look you two, it's the sea, Rennes exclaims, frolicking in glee. You, on the other hand, trudge along as far as you can from the coast, ignoring the hair sticking to your forehead. Feeling something at your feet, you glance down. There's something underneath your boot. You've stepped on a monster's cape, making it very upset. It attacks you in fury. You hear a roar in the distance. According to the townsfolk, it is a very recent phenomenon. Rumor in the village has it that it might be the dragon. The sign on the door reads, The Great Nutritionist Oreo. You open the door without knocking. Is anyone home, you call? A muscular man emerges from the back. His physique makes him look like a warrior of old. Thinking you've made a mistake, you check the nameplate on the door again. It looks like you have the right house. Then this man must be him. You politely ask if he is the nutritionist. Indeed, I am the nutritionist Oreo, he answers. He says he has been studying dietetics here for many years. You hand Oreo the extract and explain that your comrade is now bedridden because of it. He stares at the extract for a long time and then opens the bottle and laps at the liquid inside. That's poison, Melanie shouts in alarm. The man insists that he'll be fine with his expertise of nutrition and insists that knowledge is power, as if that will help somehow. Regardless, it seems he managed to grasp the composition of the poison with that lick and starts concocting a nutritional supplement to counter it. However, he says he needs a spry fish, which has been difficult to catch lately. He needs a special fish to make the necessary supplement. You ask if there isn't anything he has at the ready that can help. He explains that only a certain composition will work on those affected by the extract. You wonder if it's truly possible for someone to discern that with a single lick.
When he explains that you can catch one in the surrounding sea, Riddus confidently interjects. She shows you a page from her ancient tome, which explains the ecology of the fish in detail. That book comes in handy from time to time, Melanie remarks in surprise. Oreo gasps as if remembering something. He says that his son went out fishing and, with a bit of luck, may have already caught a spry fish. It sounds like his son is fishing on the wharf. You decide to go find him. You see a young man with his line in the water and call out to him. He turns around and flexes, shouting out suddenly, power is power. You stare, enchanted by his bulging musculature. There is no doubt in your mind that this is Oreo's son. He asks if you have business with him. Though you are pretty sure of the answer, you ask the young man if he is the nutritionist's son. That I am, he answers. He introduces himself as Bruno and says he is learning to be a nutritionist like his father. You introduce yourself, expressing to him that you are a hero on a journey and require a spry fish to save your ill comrade. His eyes begin to sparkle the moment you utter the word hero, and he becomes engrossed in your tale. More or less grasping the situation, he regrets to inform you that he has not caught any spry fish yet. He says that a monster has settled near their town, and its thundering roars have scared most of the fish away. You know Oreo needs a spry fish to make that supplement. Hearing the despair in your voice, Bruno speaks, his words like an ember in the dark. He tells you that there is a harbor near town where fishermen gather. Perhaps you can find the fish you seek there. You thank him for the information, then head to the harbor with your comrades. Just as you are about to leave, Bruno offers to escort you there. Is it a reward you're after? You are about to ask. But Melanie smacks you on the head before you can voice it and allows him to come along. Bruno looks ecstatic that he was allowed to join your party. When you ask him why, he tells you that his dream is to be an adventurer and has thus been training every day. But his father, famed in the world of nutrition, forced him into following in his footsteps. One desires strength, the other knowledge. Unable to see eye to eye, the two fight nearly every day. What will you ask Bruno? Curious about his attire, you ask why he does not wear armor. He confessed that he once wished for armor, but deemed it unnecessary after gaining so much muscle. You ask Bruno about his sword arm, saying you are something of a swordsman yourself. Bruno replies that he specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, then flexes his bulging biceps as proof. Apparently, he only carries around a sword to look like an adventurer. In that moment, you realize something. While his passion for being an adventurer is true, he is dumber than a sack of rocks. The words, birds of a feather flock together, run through your mind but you quickly chase them away, afraid of what that means for you.
pampered Piscator stands there, having just returned from fishing. Mars' fate rests upon this man's hall. Terrible, he says, showing you the few fish he's caught. Inside, you see... A spry fish, Bruno shouts. You ask him if you can have the spry fish, but he says he won't give it up for free. When you ask how much it will cost, he gives the absurd price of one million gold pieces. You're heartless, Riddus pouts. The man is enraged by the rude response. Just then, Bruno prances forth and shouts, Stop right there! Your fisherman muscles are simply sublime, he exclaims. He challenges the man to a competition of muscles with the spry fish as the prize. The piscator seems interested and agrees on one condition. If you lose, you must become my servant. This one's all yours, Melanie says, patting you on the shoulder. Then let the carnival of might and muscles begin, Bruno roars, completely fired up. Your puny body is no match for mine, the Piscator shouts back, throwing a punch. His victory sealed, Bruno strikes a glorious pose and shouts out. Witness the power of power. Defeated, the Piscator hands over the spry fish to Bruno. Bruno extends a hand to the Piscator, who has fallen to his knees. With a serene smile, he takes the offered hand. An unspoken friendship begins to form between the two. Or at least, you hope that's what the prolonged silence between them means. With the spry fish in hand, you head back towards Oreo's clinic. Bruno looks at your group sadly, reluctant for this little adventure to end. You hand the fish to Oreo and ask him to make you the supplement. Give me a moment, he says, 
then takes the fish and heads into the back. It's ready, he says, emerging from his room and handing you a bottle. You hope this will get Mar back on his feet. You need to get back to Unionville on the double. But before that... You face Bruno and say, take care, then run off. But Bruno stops you and says he wants to journey with you just a little longer. But Oreo is quick to douse the flames of his desire. You will stay here and study, he commands. Then you leave me no choice. Bruno's expression reads as he raises both hands behind his head and squats at hyper speed. I want to show this power to the world. Bruno proclaims to his father. You have much to learn, my son, Oreo retorts as he starts sidestepping at breakneck speed. Only the sound of their labored breathing and bodies moving resonates through the otherwise silent room. You can only look on in stunned silence at the enigmatic display. Bruno falls to his knees, panting. This is my limit. You have grown, my son, Oreo says, looking no worse for wear. So are you coming with us or not? Melanie interjects, ever the blunt one. Only our muscles know the answer, comes Bruno's cryptic reply. I don't get it, Riddus remarks frankly. On the condition that he study nutrition upon his return, Bruno is allowed to go with you for just a little while longer. You realize that these two have a very special way of talking that no one else can understand. Hearing yet another roar in the distance, you realize you need to get the supplement to Mar so you can investigate the sound together. rocketing down from the mountaintop, there and gone in a flash. What was that? Your friends insist it was probably just a rock, but you're convinced it was a monster, and you can prove it. You point out the coins scattered in the thing's wake. What kind of rock drops cash, you say smugly? Travelers with magical little critters can stay for free, the innkeeper informs you. It appears the headman's long-standing pronouncement on the welcoming of all magical creatures also applies to you and your party. Mar lies listlessly upon the bed, looking somewhat haggard. You help Mar sit up. Drink this, Mar, you say to him gently. 
He weakly opens his mouth, and you slowly pour the energy concentrate inside. Mar abruptly bolts up and turns his head toward you with a puzzled look. It looks like Mar is all better now. Give Mar a tight hug. Mar mules softly in discomfort. Overcome with joy, you sob and stroke Mar's head. Melanie and Riddus watch you too with a smile. Bruno is deeply moved to see nutrition bringing a smile to others. With this, you can finally put the happenings of that strange village behind you. You decide to take Bruno back to Shoreland, then continue your search for the dragon. Reluctantly enters his house. You ask Oreo if he knows anything about the monster behind that mighty roar. He says that the creature nests atop a tower not far from town. With that, your next destination is decided. Here, you will part ways with these two, but you owe a great deal to the nutritionist and his son. Bruno looks at you his eyes begging you to let him come along. What will you say? You know he would make a good ally, but you do not want to split the reward. Be reasonable. Will you let him come if he doesn't ask for a share of the reward? Melanie asks, seeing straight through your sleazy thoughts. You nod. Yes, of course. What a quick change of heart. Bruno is happy he can continue the journey, but Oreo stops him before he can get carried away. You must stay here and study, Oreo says. Bruno explains that the journey thus far has taught him the splendor of nutrition, and he now wishes to travel the world to deepen his knowledge. After hearing his son out, Oreo suddenly removes his glasses. And in the blink of an eye, the flesh of Bruno's cheeks, pectorals, and abdomen recess. And Bruno is lifted off his feet with a dull roar. Your eyes go wide at Oreo's assault, which was too fast for your eyes to catch. Knowledge of nutrition can help save lives but also strike down enemies, Oreo says softly. Wow, nutrition is incredible, Riddus marvels, not putting too much thought into the events before her. Knowledge is the true power. You tremble, never wanting to make an enemy of Oreo. Though Oreo still deems his son's knowledge insufficient, he tells him to travel the world and surpass him someday. Thank you, Father, Bruno says from the ground, moved to tears by the strength of Oreo's knowledge. So it comes to pass that you journey to the tower with Bruno to find the roaring beast. Hmm, yet another colorful character. 
Thank you.